What's up everyone, Big Dan here, and in this video, we're gonna do the ultimate character creation guide in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Now this is not going to be a specific build guide, I mainly want to walk you through all the decisions you will make in the character creation screen so you can understand what you need to do to make the character with the playstyle that you wanna have. I will say from the get-go, Warhammer's system here is a little bit different from other RPGs we've seen in recent memory. For instance, there's not any specific class per se. Rather, you create a class and play style out of two specific categories, namely the origin and the archetypes that you're going to pick. This is going to determine the type of play style that you will have for your character, what abilities you get, and what buffs and debuffs you can use in combat. So let's start walking through this. Now, you do have a few options for preset characters, but I recommend if you want to really customize your character and get the most out of your playthrough, you're definitely going to want to create your own custom character here. Now you do have a bunch of different options for portraits and things that you want to pick. You also have options here for different appearance. I'm not going to walk through all the details of this because it's all kind of self-explanatory. I mainly want to focus on how the different choices you make impact your stats and your play styles. I'm just going to pick a random portrait here. I think I want to create more of a psyker character with this build, so I'm going to choose a portrait that kind of lines up with that a little bit. So let's go with this right here. Next up, you've got your home world. Now this kind of plays two different roles in your playthrough. One, it's kind of an RP thing to kind of create the background of your character, but it also provides very important features and characteristic modifiers and talents that you're going to get. So when you're choosing your home world, you want to pick something that really lines up with your play style. So for instance, if you wanted to do a melee build, it would be really good to pick the death world as your home world because you get bonuses to strength, toughness, and agility. But if you were building a Psyker character, which is essentially a magical character, uh, for lack of a better term, Death World would not be a good thing to pick because you would lose points from Intelligence and Fellowship. If you wanted to do a Psyker character, Voidborn might be a very good choice for you because you get bonuses to Willpower and Intelligence, which are both important stats for a Psyker, with uh, Willpower being the more important stat. You're going to hear me talk about characteristics a lot in this video. If you've played other RPGs, these are often called attributes. It's basically your overarching stats that are going to impact different things in combat for you. Take a look at the different homeworld options here, look through the different talents, and see what fits your playstyle. Again, I'm doing a Psyker build, so I'm going to go with the Voidborn. Next up, you have your origin. Now, this is kind of like part one of your class. I would say the two main portions that really shape your playstyle are going to be the origin and the archetypes. So again, if I wanted to do a Psyker build, the most obvious choice would be to pick a Sanctioned Psyker, which gives you Psy Rating, which is basically a way to unlock more powerful Psyker abilities. Also gives you additional bonuses to Toughness, Willpower, Lore, Warp, and Carouse. And then you get all of these other different talents down here that are specific to the Sanctioned Psyker. We have other options as well. Astra Militum Commander is kind of good for like a soldier build. You're going to get bonuses to Ballistic Skill, which is your ranged weapons, Medicaid, which is your ability ability to heal other characters, um, and then you also get these bonuses to Field of Fire and Momentum and things along the, those lines. Commissar would be more of a build that would be good for like a melee character and also provide additional buffs for your companions. A weapon skill is basically what determines your effectiveness with melee weapons and other things in close combat. So if you want to do a melee build, Commissar could be a good choice for you. A similar thing with Crime Lord, you're going to get a bonus to your melee weapon. You also get bonuses to perception, which could be very good for detecting traps. And then we have the priest, naval officer, and noble. So again, you're going to want to read through all these descriptions and kind of pick a character origin that's going to fit the kind of playstyle you want and provide the characteristic modifiers and talents that you want to get. So again, in combat, there are kind of like three main styles to play, I would say. You can use ranged weapons, which is things like shotguns, sniper rifles, plasma rifles, those sorts of things. You can also use melee weapons, or you can use Psyker or Navigator abilities, which are kind of like magical abilities. So again, it'll be important to look over the characteristics and sort of pick things that are synergistic with the playstyle you want for your main character. Now, before I proceed, I do want to say that if you are worried about having gaps in your roster, don't really worry about that because you're going to pick up companions that will fill basically every role you could possibly have in this game. You're going to have a party of six people in total 
total. Your main character plus five companions on the battlefield at any time. So any gaps that you see in your own main character will be filled by other characters in your party. But once you've decided on an origin, you're also going to pick sort of a subclass for that origin. So for psychers, we have Biomancer, Diviner, Pyromancer, Sanctic, and Telepath. And these are going to give you a little bit of different abilities. Some of them, there's some overlap between them. I will say, if you do want to go with a Psyker build, you do get a character very early in the game that is a Diviner. So if you want to have something that's a little bit different from our companion character, her name is Adira, then I'd recommend going with one of these other ones. Uh, I ended up going with the Biomancer in my uh, main character build. So let's maybe try out Pyromancer instead. This is going to give us the Ignite ability and Blazing Inferno and a few other abilities that will allow us to sort of rain down fireballs on the battlefield. So next up, we have our Triumph and Darkest Hour. These are purely role-playing things. So the types of Triumphs that are going to be available to you will be specific to the origin story you pick. So for here, for Psychers, we're going to have Apex of Brilliance, Illustrious Glory, and Feats of Greatness. So let's go with Feat of Greatness this time around. The power of your sorcery crushed a demon of the arch enemy and drove it back into the war. Darkest Hour um, is kind of like the darker side of your character, something that's really like scarred your backstory. So for Psychers, we have the option of Grim Portents, Brand of Shame, and Shadow of Torment. So Brand of Shame, your sorcery caused a warp manifestation aboard a void ship, claiming thousands of lives in the end. Again, this provides some, you know, just pure RP, doesn't really affect any of your stats or anything along those lines. So now we have the archetypes, and this is kind of like part two of your build. It's going to provide things that buff certain things about your play style, and also provide new abilities that are able to buff your party, provide debuffs on the enemies, etc. Again, this is only part of your play style. You're going to have four archetypes that you can choose at the beginning of the game, and each of these has its own path that goes through other archetypes that you'll pick up later. So you pick further sub archetype at level 16, and then a final one at level 36, which is late game. So warriors are your kind of like melee build. You're going to get the charge ability, which is super useful. Uh, charge will allow you to basically do a charge attack that gives you a free extra attack during combat. So if you're able to charge up to an enemy, use a melee attack, it will not expend your regular melee attack and you can make a second attack in the same round, which is pretty rare. So that's a cool thing to have. So again, if you want to go for a melee build, absolutely you're going to want to pick warrior. Officers use their willpower and fellowship to improve combat capabilities. So this is going to provide various buffs to your party uh, that give you things that will give you extra turns or boost your momentum. Momentum is a stat which will allow you to use special abilities that are extremely powerful but can only be used at certain situations in combat. But you'll learn more about those as you go through the tutorial. I was going with a Psyker build. I ended up picking the officer because I wanted to have my main character be like the director on the battlefield providing different buffs. But again, your play style can be very different. You can do a melee character that has an officer build or you could do a range character that has an officer build. You're really flexible with this kind of class, uh, but this is sort of like your battlefield director that will provide buffs to your party. Operative is kind of similar in a sense, except it's with debuffing. So operative uses intelligence and perception to find and exploit weaknesses in an enemy defenses. Again, I think that Adira has the operative ability. So again, as you're building out your team, you are going to have other characters that will fill these different roles. And then you also get these ultimate abilities as well and boost to particular characteristics that are important for your archetype. And then finally, we have Soldier, which is really your ranged build character. So if you want to go guns blazing, this is a good option for you as well. You're going to get the run and gun, revel and slaughter, and different firearm mastery ultimate abilities here. I believe that Argenta fills the soldier role as well. So we'll go with the officer again. It's important to preview which sort of subclasses you'll be able to spec into later. And you can kind of take a look at these and see what you have for choices and abilities. So you can really go wild in here and really dig deep. But I would say, generally speaking, if you want to go with a melee build, warrior is your best bet. If you want to go with more of a ranged weapons build, soldier is your best bet. And again, buffing with officers and debuffing with operative. So let's go with the officer build. So now we have our characteristics. Again, these are basically attributes. You have weapon skill, which is going to buff melee weapons, ballistic skill, which is going to be your ranged weapons. Strength is going to affect how much damage you do in melee. Toughness is going to uh, increase your wounds, which is basically Warhammer terminology for HP. So it boosts your HP and your resistance to damage. Agility will increase 
increase your ability to dodge enemy attacks. Also, agility can be used with certain abilities to buff your attack damage with either melee weapons or ranged weapons, depending on the ability. Intelligence, measurement of your character's acumen. This is going to buff some of your lore skills, as well as Medicaid, which is a healing ability, and tech use. Perception increases your awareness skill. It also reduces the chances for enemies to dodge, and it plays into things like detecting traps and that sort of thing. Willpower is a good thing to pick for Psyker builds. It's going to affect your ability to withstand warp abilities and also harness them better for yourself. It increases the chances of resisting negative mental effects and psychic powers. And then Fellowship is going to increase your persuasion, coercion, and ability to interact with other characters. Fellowship's also good for buffing characters, so if you do want to go with more of an officer archetype build, Fellowship is important characteristic to boost. So again, we're going with a Psyker build, so I'm going to boost up Willpower. We'll boost Intelligence. We do want to go with the Officer build, so we're going to do Fellowship. Well, we don't have any extra points, so we'll boost our toughness later so we can get a little bit more HP. And then here, basically, you name your Void Ship. So obviously, you become the Rogue Trader in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. You get your own ship. You have your choice to basically just name it whatever you want to here, or you could use the dice to just randomize the name. Let's call it Big Boat. And then we've got our result. Here we are. We've kind of built our character here. We can name our character. We'll just do Big Dan and, you know, an overview of our character sheet. So I do want to talk about skills a little bit too. These impact the different skill checks you're going to make, mainly in dialogue and exploration in the game. They can affect combat as well. Things like demolition are going to affect your ability to disarm traps. It'll also impact your ability with grenades and that sort of thing. Often used for hacking like electronic locks. And then Medicaid impacts your ability to to heal other characters or yourself using med kits. And then a lot of these other ones are mostly used for like dialogue checks. Sometimes you'll get an athletics check, get to an inaccessible area. Obviously things like coercion, commerce, lore, persuasion, a lot of those are going to be used in dialogue. So it's worth looking into what you want to sort of build. And again, as always, you're going to have other characters in your roster that will fill the gaps that you have with your main character. So you really are free in this game to choose however you want to play with your main character and not really worry about having a balanced party because you naturally get a balanced party with your other companions. So there you have it. This should give you everything you need to know to build your character the way you want to in Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. I will be posting some build guides and other tip videos in the coming days. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and Warhammer videos like this one. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.